Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you, and today we're just going to do this quick little mandala stone. I'm using mostly the etcher to do some swipes, and it's on a natural stone, and it's so smooth. It's one I've picked up in Maine, off the beaches, on the shores, and I'm not going to do a background. We're going to do it au naturel here. So I'm just going to kind of gauge my center, eyeball it, because it's not a perfectly round stone. And we're going to put a nice old dot of eucalyptus leaf there in the center. The acrylic rod just about three quarters of an inch. This one now I'm using is the Angle Spot Detailer Paintbrush from Princeton. And we're going to put a couple of nice dots of this beautiful peacock pearl paint. So this is just in a plus formation, so it's going to be a quad mandala. It'll just have the four sections of the design. And we'll just take that peacock pearl out here for about a half an inch. And we'll put two large dots here. And now I'm going to take my etcher tool and we're going to kind of drag that paint. Oh, this end's a little too sharp. So we're going to flip it to the other end and just drag the paint down towards that center dot of the eucalyptus leaf. It just makes a different little teardrop shape here. So I'm just pulling it down with the gold side of the etcher here and we'll do two more dots here of the peacock pearl. The peacock pearl is one of the dazzling metallics from Deco Art. It's just such a gorgeous color. So you can see the difference too in painting on a natural stone. You don't exactly have a guide with having the background at the edge. So you just kind of have to gauge where you're placing. You can't really sketch a background onto the natural stone. So it's a little more of organic flow of painting, but it's really enjoyable, I promise. You should check it out. So this next color is Desert Turquoise. And it's such a great complement to the Peacock Pearl. Just a little bit darker and not quite as shiny. So this is similar. I'm just doing it a little farther down next to the Peacock. We're just pulling it straight into the Desert Turquoise as well. And I think we're just going to put it on these two sides. And you can see this is in real time. I'm just taking my time and pulling out the design. It's not quick, it's not fast, it's just a relaxing, calm <laughs> etching in of the paint. So now I have this lovely dazzling metallic oyster pearl. And we're going to just pull it down these two sides of the peacock here on the other sides of the stone. We'll just pull them down here. And while the paint is still wet, you can reshape this a bit so you have a little bit of time to work with it. So again, don't feel rushed. I'm just putting my dots here and you could even put a dot of paint with a dotting tool. You don't have to use a brush. Just put your dots down and then pull the paint out. And we're pulling this in towards the center as well. back to grab a bit of that desert turquoise and we'll put a big plumpy dot here in the center and that eucalyptus leaf has just a hint of blue to it so it's a nice complement to these
This next color is called Shoreline. It's just a light blue. And I'm just placing less paint on the end of the tool and pulling it down towards the center to make the little teardrop mark. And I'm only doing this on the turquoise element sides. So now on these other sides, I'm going to actually flip and use titanium white and just a little tiny bit on the end of the tool so that it's just a small drag out for these little designs. Now I am grabbing some of the Extreme Sheen line from Decord. It has this wonderful peridot color. It's just a fabulous green, just really earthy and lush. And I'm going out a bit farther, so it's about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch, and it's longer drag here of the dot. So we put our dot down. And then we're still pulling it towards the center where we put the four peacock pearl dots around our center. So it just makes a plus sign here to give you a guide as well with the pear dot. So, moving on to matcha green. This one is nice and bright. A little bit of sunshine green here. And on either side of our peridot, I'm going to pull these down using the etcher as well. And just pull it down into our peacock dot here. And you can see it's a really nice complement to the darker peridot. Being a natural stone, there's little pock marks on this, so if you did want to fill those in ahead of time, you'd have a smoother painting experience probably. Um, I kind of don't mind the challenge of the bumps in the road, but we're just kind of go along with it here for this one. But if you're looking to have a smoother ride, you could always varnish your stone first, paint on top of your varnish, and then clear coat it again after you're finished painting. Um, there's also a product called Gesso that you could go out there and seal your stone with it and it will fill in the holes for you. But I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy the challenge of doing this. It's just kind of a more organic flow of painting your stone. So now I've let these dry just a little bit, I'm going to come in and do some larger dots here of the desert turquoise. And I think I will try to drag these out. I'm looking at it and something's just telling me to tuck it down in that space along the greens. So I'm going to grab my etcher tool after and we'll pull them down. So we'll put all these down first which may be problematic if they start to dry, but there are products out there that can kind of extend the length of drying time on your paint. So if you're looking for a little slower process or having the time to do things so you don't feel rushed, you can add that medium to your paints and it will give you a little bit of time for them drying. All right, so, you know, there's tons of products out on the market that are meant to help us out with these kind of things. Just a matter of finding them, right? So if you are looking for the products that I've used in this video, you can feel free to check out the video's description, and I post links there, as in all my videos, for you to be able to find what I've used. Any of the paints, the tools, the turntable that I spin my stone here on, any of those should be in the description for you. 
I also try to put the colors I've used for paints just so you'll have that list there for you too. Make life a little easier. <laughs> So this desert turquoise is a little bit thicker because I didn't let it dry, which actually the pointy end is allowing me to drag the paint out still, the metal end here. And I have a little more control over tucking it into the smaller spaces as opposed to using the gold end, which is thicker and can do a kind of a fatter drag out. But I'm just kind of re-wetting my dots here so that I can pull the paint down from the wet paint because they did dry a little too much for me. So it's looking kind of fun. Nice little design on this little tiny stone. Let's take some white and I'm using probably a two millimeter dotting stylus now. I'm just taking the white and pulling that from our center colors out to the edge of the stone here. We'll put a nice big dot of white here on the four of the turquoise elements and in our center. That dot is really built up now in the middle. <laughs> I think too, I'll just steal from the white here and do a couple little dots on the side just to kind of connect them to that peacock swipe a little bit more. And as I said earlier, you know, this just becomes a little organic of a process where you look at it, decide if you want to add more, not add more. And sometimes you'll get to a point where you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I should or shouldn't add more. It may look chaotic. Then leave it for a day or two and come back to it and take a look at it. It's like a whole new piece. And you could decide then, fresh-minded. So Extreme Sheen also makes this lovely emerald green. And I'm just doing just a touch of it here at the top of our matcha swipes. And maybe I'll do some top dots in the center of our turquoise, I'm um, peacock dots afterwards, just to kind of bring the green to the middle as well. See, it was that little bit of emerald green. And I think, yeah, I will come on in here and just add a top dot of that emerald. And that way it doesn't feel as separated with your colors if you kind of coordinate them throughout the whole piece. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed creating this with me. Again, these are the tools and paints that I use. The links will be in the description. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. Have a great day.